Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, thank you for tuning in to Super Agents Live. Uh, if you're new to the show, welcome. I appreciate you tuning in. And if you don't know, what we do on the show is we talk about people who kill it in real estate. Today's guy uh, I got introduced to by Steve Harney. If you know who Steve Harney is, that's a big boy. That's a big name in the world of real estate. So I appreciate this intro. Um, and here's what we talk about today. It's really, you know, look, I kind of listened to this episode over again before uh, releasing it. And uh, we get into some nitty gritty, man. We talk about the value, your value as an agent and how to convey that value in five steps. We talk about why negotiation is so important. And, and we go through step by step how to Never, ever, ever uh, uh, cut your commission. Um, and, and, and look, and we also talk about how to go over, how to become a better negotiator. This episode is a class in how to get better, really in your listing presentation. So I think you're going to find it very, very valuable. And before we get to it, let's hear a word from our awesome sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm, but how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three-pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people, and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content, or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white labeled. Now, I called, prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications clients, and I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. Okay, before we get to the content really quick, we always do a little bit of housekeeping. The hashtag... For this show, if you don't know, is unpack that idea. Tweet out unpack that idea as a hashtag on Twitter. You'll get followers. I'll follow you. I encourage everybody in our, it's a big follow train. I encourage everyone to follow each other. And look, our tribe on Twitter is getting stronger every day. It's amazing, man. Sometimes I will wake up. I'm up at, I'm up early. I'm up at 4.30 in the morning and uh, I have like 20 tweets uh, and people talking about the show. So that's awesome. Um, the other thing is, I'm looking at my calendar right now. So we are going to do a live event here in San Diego. Um, and we, I wanted to do it the third week, one, two, three. So how about this? Um, this is 95% confirmed. Uh, July 18, July 18. So mark in your calendar. Uh, I need to confirm uh, with the wife to make sure we are not out of town. And I should have done that before I just told you. But uh, but 95% July 18, live event, San Diego, 150 bucks, 10 people. 10 people from the audience, we're going to rent a hotel room and mastermind all day. So we're going to buy some food, have a hotel suite. It should be a super duper learning experience and uh, it should be really, really fun. One other thing is, uh, I, you know, if, look, if you're looking to level up and you're thinking about getting a coach, I have one spot available. One spot. So uh, send me an email if you're interested. We'll, you know, we'll chat. We'll see if we're a good fit. Um, my email, uh, just go to the website. You can send it there if you don't know it. I, and look, I give my email all the time. Um, and I might stop kind of doing that because I, I get like 500 emails a day and it's hard for me to keep up. And I look, if you do send me an email, I appreciate it. Don't feel bad about it. I really try to respond to everybody in a timely manner. Uh, you know, and, and I, I try to give a thoughtful response. So anyhow, um, that's it. 
let's get to the show. Everybody, today we have a special guest. Uh, my recent friend and Steve Harney introduced me to a guy, Charlie Mayoni. And Charlie is, uh, is going to talk to us a little bit about uh, the value of an agent and, uh, and the state of affairs and real estate. Hey, Charlie, thanks for taking the time out today. No, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Tony. No problems. So listen, um, tell everybody a little bit about, you know, I'm new to you. I've, you know, this is the first time we've met. We chatted a little bit before we started uh, recording here. But maybe take a minute, tell everybody about you and, uh, and what you have uh, going on right now. Sure. I've been in the business uh, 11 years. Uh, I'm on, in Nassau County on Long Island, suburb of New York City, about 20 or so miles out. Uh, mostly handle residential real estate, uh, some commercial, but I've just been very excited. My business has been growing uh, very steadily through the downturn of the market in these last you know, several years. And I try to pride myself on thinking out of the box and really differentiating myself from other agents in approach and just on how you go about you know, doing my business. So, 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 uh, in terms of that, you, how to unpack that a little bit about? So, you know, thinking outside the box and differentiating yourself. I mean, because that's really everything, right? I mean, <clears throat> everybody can open a door. Everybody can, you know, tell, you know, look at the MLS and, uh, you know, tell me about a piece of property. But how how do you differentiate yourself? Well, I feel that most sellers, and again, I blame the lack of whether it's experience or just how to where the agents don't let sellers know what their value is and why they are valuable to them. So, for example, most sellers, when you poll them, they will pick an agent based on what they'll put their house up for and how much they charge, period, end of story. Right. And I guess if they like them, they feel comfortable with them, the trust factor, but then that lends the question, well, how do you differentiate yourself? What, what makes one agent different than another? And why? And again, if the public or the sellers of the world think that way, is that by accident or is it because it's a learned response because the agents haven't made that clear? So, for example, I would say that the skills of an agent are paramount. So let's take an airline pilot, a trial lawyer, anyone who has a certain set of skills, a brain surgeon, they have a certain set of skills. There are good brain surgeons, there are not so good brain surgeons, and ditch diggers, you can go all the way down the line. But I find most agents never talk about what their skills are and how they're valuable to the seller, which completely, I feel, addresses the whole commission issue and why someone should be paid more than someone else. You know, Look at a baseball player, some hit home runs often, some don't, and vice versa. So when you look at the five main skills... There's about five or six main skills that an agent needs to have and needs to convey that they have. The first one, which is my favorite one, is the skill of negotiating. The second one is marketing, how to market a property, expose a property properly, and be creative about it. The third is networking, being able to network within your sphere, within your real estate world when trying to sell a property. Fourth is technology skills. In today's day and age, you have to have a good set of technology skills, whether it's through yourself and through your company, to differentiate yourself because everything is about the Internet. The buyers are so on top of things. It, it, it's very different than it was even five, ten, but especially you know years back. And you have to be able to prepare and stage the property properly before it gets put up for sale. Th those are skills. They're all skills. I know some agents that are amazing at them, and I know agents that are really poor at them. So, but unless that's talked about, the seller is not going to look at me or any other agent and say, well, I see why, Charlie, I should pay you X percent, whereas the other one is offering to do it for X percent. Make sense, Toby? Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, look, you know, everybody goes into... <clears throat> I, ha I I coach some people, and uh, and one of the things we get into once we kind of you know at some point we get into what's you know their listing presentation, and it's amazing to me that everybody has this this most people's listing presentations are exactly the same, and they lead off with this one slide that I have everybody take out of their deck, but they have this one slide that says hey. <clears throat> 
and it's nothing special, but you know, I'm going to put your house on the MLS and, and look how I'm going to syndicate it to, to the world. And they think that's some kind of value. So, I mean, I love this. I mean, I love, I love that if, if an agent can go in and convey these five points, um, they, they will get more listings and they'll get, uh, they'll, they'll be able to charge more. How do, so how, how would, do you do that? How do you convey your unique skills to uh, a potential uh, client? So, for example, if we start with negotiating, which I actually, for two years now, I've been teaching negotiating to new agents, um, you know, at our company. And there's that saying that teaching is the next level of learning. So the more I do that, the better I feel I get at it. But when it comes to negotiating, if you're a seller, Toby, I I would say to you, listen, one of the most important skills and traits that I have in representing you is being your chief negotiator. Because in all honesty, Mr. Seller, the negotiation skills of an agent really is the main focal point of what's going to determine the success of the sale. Hmm. Yes, it has to be priced right, all the other things that go along with it, but if an agent can't negotiate well on your behalf, there are thousands of dollars, if not more, that could be lost. I will also say that from my experience in doing this, most times within the bell curve, so to speak, buyers and sellers will go back and forth between two and three times. Uh, at least in my area, um, different parts of the country might be different, but in my neck of the woods, the Long Island area, I find in doing this 11 years, most buyers and sellers will go back and forth two to three times. So if a seller is asking a certain price, a buyer will make an offer. A seller will then counter. A buyer comes back again. The seller responds. Maybe the buyer comes back one more time. Very rarely does a buyer make an offer. The seller counters, and the buyer just bolts and says, no, that's it, I'm done. Because there's one of my favorite words about negotiating is the word ego, E-G-O. It is the most paramount word that has to do with negotiating. It's not about the money. I learned this, thankfully, a long time ago. So, Mr. Seller, based on that knowledge that you will go back and forth probably two to three times and knowing that my job for you is to predict how the buyer is going to come back and offer and counteroffer, Based on that, we need to price your house based on the market in this range because then we're going to almost predict where we're going to end up. Make sense? Interesting. Do you, do you see how that you and I would be a great negotiating team versus the buyer and the other agents? See, and it's very hard for you to say no to that. Right. <laughs> you know, so when it comes to negotiating, that, that to me is a very paramount, paramount type of thing. So in terms of – so now – uh, help me understand that. So, so, um, you know, you can predict that, you know, that, that you're going to go back two to three times. Um, and that helps you price, you know, number one, pick the right price for the property. Is that what, what I'm hearing from you, Charlie? Right. Because, because, you know, the ego can't handle going back and forth five or six or seven times. And like I said, rarely is it only one time. So knowing that it's two to three times, and let's just say that the fair market value of a house is 500,000. Okay. okay. Roughly. We all know that if 10 appraisers go into a house, the numbers will vary slightly, but let's use it as a simple benchmark. So based on that, and you want to leave, leave some room for negotiating, I would say to you, Toby, as the seller, well, knowing that the two to three times concept is almost the case every single time, let's work backwards and see how much room we need to give. But I also preface this, Toby, by saying that you don't build in Twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars worth of fluff when you negotiate, because it just makes no sense. When you overprice a house, people buyers will have one or two reactions. They'll either say, "Does this jerk really know what the market is?" I, I guess not. You know what? They must not be a serious seller. Let's move on. Or right. number two, if they do make an offer, it will be so far off the mark. Because they'll have this feeling or, or this inclination that, well, they're pricing it here. I mean, you know, we got to make a really low offer if, he's, if he or she is so high. So I say to the seller, listen, five, ten thousand at a time is really all you need to negotiate back and forth properly. So if you price the house at 515, 518, 520, thereabouts, you might get some people that could lowball you at 450. I get it. But you know what? Don't worry about those. The serious sellers and more openly, the agents who are representing them will tell them, listen, don't even think about lowballing 123 Main Street that Charlie Mayoni has because you're going to lose the house to somebody else. You see, it's all about the strategy, the mindset, and the approach when you negotiate. And when I talk this way to a seller, 
they get it. They see it's not a snow job. They see it's real. They see it's calculated, measured, and it's based on, yeah, it makes sense. It's practical. So just by discussing that with them, I know I've won them over because they see that they could meet with 10 other agents. I could pretty much guarantee you, Toby, no one else is going to speak to them this way. Right. Right. No, I agree. I agree. So in terms of real negotiating, so how much more do you think you get your sellers uh, than the next guy? Well, that's a great, great question. How I answer that question, if you said to me, well, Charlie, Century 21 is going to do it for 1% less than you or a percent and a half less than you than what you're going to charge. I'd say, okay, I understand that. But I can tell you that my negotiating skills alone are at least worth 1% difference over the other agent. And I will go through the dialogue that I just did and explain to them that, listen, you might think that by having a, a lower commission is going to save you on the front end, but Mr. Seller, it's on the back end based on my negotiating skills where I know how to go through the process very well and will make that five, seven, let's say the average you know, price in my area is 400000 450 I'll say that that 1% difference that you're looking at that you think you're going to save, but with my negotiating skills, that 3000 4000 5000 because of the strategy that I work with is going to make that difference to you. And with all due respect, if an agent can't negotiate the value of their own commission, how well do you think that they're going to negotiate the price of your house when it gets hot and heavy? Right. I love that line. And, and in terms of real negotiation, Charlie, <clears throat> Right. Price is one component, but there's lots of other components you can that you can negotiate with. Right. You know, there's timelines, there's repairs, there's, you know, how, how do you bundle stuff in? Because I know how I do stuff. Right. I don't always, you know, <clears throat> price is one component to buy. If somebody wants to pay me something lower, you know, I will take something else away. Uh, what right. uh, talk to us a little bit about real tactics. W what you're totally describing, Toby, is the concept of leverage. Now, what most agents only know how to do, like you said, Charlie, you know, price is obvious, but that's all most agents know how to negotiate around, the one constant price. But you will get to a standstill. Ultimately, people will dig their heels in, and then what do you do? Well, yeah. we could try to meet in the middle, but I've learned to leverage so many things, and I talk about this in my class, and, and it's, it's really exciting. But I have to preface by saying one small thing. You have to take the time to know your clients so, so well, and it all starts the night that you put that listing up for sale. You have to know what makes your clients tick, how they think, why they think, what experiences they've been through, because if you don't, you're only going to be able to negotiate based on the numbers. But when you know what else is important to someone, for example, closing time, down payment, furniture, it could even be something personal where the buyer might somehow work with a family member of the seller as a police officer or in a hospital or something else. You can leverage anything that could affect how the seller might think. Right. So I'll use all different kinds of scenarios. My, one of my favorite questions is when an agent calls me on a listing and says, Charlie, I know they're asking 500, but you know, you think they'll take 480. Now, most agents don't know how to handle that. I mean, you could just say, well, listen, they're asking 500. That's the number you can make an offer. I'll throw something back at them say, well, What's your buyer's closing time period? What's this, this, this? You know, ask them different questions that kind of put them on the defensive. And they'll have to say, well, Charlie, you know, I'll, I'll go back and ask them. And I'll say, yeah, because if they are, you know, they, they could be flexible on the price. So I always bring something else into, into the picture, yeah. leverage something else. Right. And, but again, you can't do that just by winging it. You have to know what's important to your clients. I've known many people where the final price is really not that important to them, within reason. Other things are important of, of what I mentioned. So, yeah, you have to know how to be tactical and bring different things in. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I would take, you know, I mean, like the fridge is one thing, right? Like, oh, if they want to offer that, you know, they don't get the fridge. Or, you know, like, I don't really want the fridge, but I, I used to take all sorts of stuff away and then give it back. And, um, and I would actually, uh, you know, not that. I guess I was trying to, whatever. I mean, I would get people confused. I would actually get people, other agents frustrated with me because, you know, I'm a better negotiator than they were. And I, you know, I guess I put them in uncomfortable situations. So in, ter in terms of knowing um, your clients, right? So that's what, what you said. You got to know what your clients very well. You have to know what makes them tick. 
how do you do that? Is it just, is that is it for you, Charlie, is that just by spending a bunch of time or do you have like a script of questions that you actually ask them that, that uh, will give you that insight? It, it's based on, there, there, are, there are specific questions and I guess you could use the word script because there, there are general questions that I will ask, but it's based on, there's four pillars to negotiating, relationship, trust, likability, and preparedness. Preparedness is, is being a good realtor, in other words, knowing the market, being smart about real estate in your market. But the other three, relationship, trust, and likability, are those pillars that have to do with the interpersonal, interrelational, Dale Carnegie skills, if you will. And that's the only way you're going to learn your client. So, for example, if you were the seller, I would ask you questions. Just ask you questions about, you know, what challenges do you anticipate with selling your house? What are the biggest hurdles and obstacles that you see? Tell me about the sale from your perspective. And just asking questions and having a conversation with people. One of my favorite questions is, if your home doesn't sell in six months, how does this affect your life? You know, yeah. what, what goes on? I shut my mouth and I patiently wait for them to answer. I don't right. know how long it takes. So the more that open-ended dialogue, why do you feel that way? Tell me more. All, all that line of questioning, and this is on the listing, of course, consultation, it's conversations. Afterwards, it's all throughout the process. What, what I'm doing, Toby, is I'm building the foundation to be a phenomenal negotiator so that when the offer comes in, I, I know my seller so, so well that, when we go into an actual negotiation, two things happen. The trust, the relationship, the likability is so strong that the seller is going to be absolutely transparent and candid with me. Because what I'm talking about, I know it to be true because I've made a lot of mistakes by doing it the wrong way. Whereas when I didn't have that, the seller really wouldn't kind of be straight with me because maybe they didn't trust me or feel that I was, I really knew them well and, and all of that. So it's that open-ended line of questioning and just open dialogue. You know, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Right. Sort of thing. right. Yeah. So that to me is, is my dialogue. And, and I don't have a, a prepped, you know, um, listing presentation. I don't. I never did. I, I don't do a formal MLS CMA. Yeah. I learned how to do it, when I, but I never did because I know that, forgive me, but any schmuck who has a license can do a CMA and it's almost like, you know, the, the golden chalice and, and it's like, here it is. Well, that means nothing to a seller because yeah. a seller takes it and says, great, you told me what my house is worth. You haven't demonstrated your value to me at all. Great. I'll, I'll go FISBO. Right, right, right. So, so you said one thing in there, Charlie, that I, that I love and you, you said it very quickly, but you know, you, you, you said, okay, ask open-ended questions. But what you said was, keep your mouth quiet. Don't say one word. And I, and I think that's so hard for people. It's so hard for, for people to, to, you know, it's like asking people, somebody to sign the contract and you, you, you hold the pen out, you look in the eye, you don't say anything. Um, have you found that is a, that is a, a skill that, uh, that people should master and then it's difficult to master? It is an absolute must. It's the old adage, Toby, of two ears, two eyes, and one mouth. Right. You're supposed to do twice as much with the first two than you are with the latter. One of my favorite quotes is, one of the best ways to persuade others is with your ears by listening to them. Yeah. It's not a phrase that's well known, but when I heard it, and again, it's all Dale Carnegie, it's all the same principles, but you must master that. And, and what you really have to master, and, and I want to kind of keep it grounded and not speak in an esoteric way, but... All, all that comes down to is when you're speaking to someone, obviously, you're focused on what you're saying and you're speaking. But when someone's talking to you, what obviously should you be doing? Listening. Yes. Right? Yep. But what, what do most of us do? And I guess it's kind of a natural inclination unless you learn it otherwise. But you're thinking about what you want to say next. Yes. You're not really listening because you're in the sales mode. You're in the influence mode. You're in that mode of trying to convince. And, but you, you can't. You have to do some talking, but you got to get that other person to talk. I mean, what's the sweetest sound in the world to someone? Their, Their own, own voice. voice. Yeah. So you have to, again, with different people, I do it different ways. You have to flex depending on personalities. If they're, you know, a driver personality, an analytical, an amiable, you know, an expressive, things that are like, you know, your basic sales training techniques 101. But that to me is paramount. And the longer I do this, I... I call it being present. When you're being present with someone, you really don't even have to. The body language and the eye contact and all the things that 
you know when you're connecting with someone. Because what I've learned, too, is you should be able to tell when someone is not on the same page as you and does not get what you're talking about. Yeah. But most agents just ramble on and ramble on and ramble on. They don't stop and check in or make the seller or buyer feel like, you know, no, you have the floor. It's important to me what you think, what you feel. You know, yes, I'm the expert that you're hiring, but it has, you have to have that skill. You really have to have that skill. Yeah, I totally agree with you. <clears throat> Sorry, Charlie. I, I totally agree with you. And I'll tell you, I think um, I'll talk about myself for a second. I'm really good at that. I'm a, I'm a phenomenal sales guy. And I think that's why this show is people resonate with this show so well, because I, I don't have a set of questions. I listen to my guest, I, you know, and I try to dig into what you're saying. So, and I'm not thinking, you know, I'm really, and it's, it's tough, you know, to be on this side of the mic is tough sometimes. Right. And it's the same thing. Like if, you know, if somebody's in a listening presentation, you have to, you know, follow your client as well as lead them to the place where you want to get. Okay. So that is, uh, so that is negotiating that you awesome. The next, uh, the next main skill is marketing. Let talk to us about that. Yeah. Marketing again, this is, you have to set yourself apart and demonstrate to the seller what things and how you will promote the house that, and listen, I loved what you said in the beginning, Tony, because Toby, because it's one of my favorite lines about, well, I'm going to put your house on MLS and expose it to the world. Yeah. I will literally say to a seller, listen, any, you know, uh, schmo with a license in their basement can put your home on MLS. I, I come right out and say, listen, I'm not here really to talk about MLS. Yes, it will be on MLS. I know it's very important. We all get to share. I, I get it. But let's stick MLS over here for a second. Because if that's all that you're about, you can put your house on MLS for $500 and, and do everything else yourself. You know, how does that sound? <laughs> so, you know, so I, I love when those type of, of objections come. So when it comes to marketing, okay, you have to have a plan, meaning you have to know your market, and many agents don't know their market. I make sure I know my market to a T. I know how many homes are up for sale each month. I know how many homes have sold in the last month. I know how many homes are up at a given time in, in my zip codes that I handle. I know the market so well. You know, and I've learned this from, from Steve Harney, gratefully, who, you know, who has a great way of analyzing this. You've got to know your absorption rates, all those things about the market. Because pricing is not separate, make no mistake. Pricing is a part of marketing. Pricing is part of how you market the house. If you don't price the house properly, you are not marketing that house properly. Right. It's very, very important. But when it comes to exposure, you have to have professional photography. I go on MLS and I see so many listings and properties that either have zero or too few pictures, or the pictures are horrible. And I will sit with a seller and I'll say, listen, would you want to have your house look like this? Do you think this is good marketing? No, this is atrocious marketing. You know, at my company, we only have professional photography done, whether it's a co-op, condo, million dollar house, doesn't matter. You're going to have professional photography and we'll work with you to prepare your house so it looks amazing to the public. Who's your public? The internet. It's called eye candy. You have to draw them in by making the house look appetizing to want to come and see. You know, the other thing that I do is I talk about the agents who sell, not work with sellers necessarily, but who sell a lot of homes with buyers in my area. I let the seller know that I have a buy-level marketing plan. I'm targeting the buyer pool, but I'm also targeting the agent pool, the real estate world who I know because generally most agents have three or four buyers that they're working with at any given time. I know to target them, and a lot of them, of course, I have great relationships with, to target them to make sure that they're going to know about my listing. And when they have a hot buyer, they're going to come to see me. Also, being generous with the commission. Being generous to that buyer's or, or broker's agent that's going to come and want to show the house you want to give them a healthy commission. Commission, this one, two, two, you know, you got to give good commission out there. And most agents, they do the opposite. They think, well, if I charge less, if I'm chintzy, I'm doing the right thing by myself, seller, I'm going to save them money. No, 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 it's the total opposite. But our company also has different relationships with Zillow and Trulia and a lot of the big companies to get our properties ranked first on a lot of the websites. Hmm. You know, we also have a special tool that's called a find the buyer tool. It's an amazing tool. We'll have at any given time, Toby, about 
290, 300,000 registered users on our on our company's website. Forget MLS, forget Zillow, forget all all the aggregates. Just our company's website. That's amazing. And we have a special program, and I, I print this out and I show it to them, where we can go out and find the buyers that are looking at similar properties to yours based on square footage, school district size, value, all of that. And when your house goes up for sale, Mr. Seller, we have an amazing way through the IP address of, of where they're at and contacting them because they registered on our website. So I personally don't know these people, but when your property comes out, I can guarantee you and show you in writing that whether it's 56 or 100, whatever the number is of matches, the property will get automatically sent to them. So now I'm not just throwing mud up against the wall like what most other brokers do by putting it on this site and doing this and exposing and trying to catch the buyer. We're also going out and targeting specific buyers that would most likely be the ones that would want to buy your house. How does that sound? That sounds, <clears throat> that sounds amazing. So, but Charlie, um, so what you do, help me understand this technically. So, so you have this 300,000 people uh, that's on your site every month. That's amazing traffic, number one. So no, number two, if I'm on your website and I'm searching for five bedroom, three bath homes, right. you you attach my search uh, my search history to my IP address, and then and then you go out and then what, what do you? Well, what happens is when you once you go to the, and you know we span from Manhattan all the way out to Montauk we're up into Westchester County you know we're a big big company about 3,000 agents you know we're a monster sized company which obviously has advantages so that's why we were able to have 300,000 or so not just visitors but registered users in other wow. words they've gone on they've given their email address and some basic information and they're registered and they'll get emails with properties but our specific technology our system once they're loaded in and a certain property comes up based on a specific address, of course, the technology is used where it goes out into a radius of whether it's the town or the school district or within, let's say, a mile radius. It will go out and find those buyers that are registered users on our website, and it will go out and say, hey, this property is new to the market. You should check it out because you've looked at 125 Main Street, 123 Smith Street, and you've been looking, you looked at this many houses in this many days, this is the last time you logged on. So here's a house that fits with what you've been looking for. Hey, come check it out, with literally just, just a click you know, of a button. Now, that's something, again, that really no one else has. Amazing. So, you yeah. Know, so, uh, so yeah, in terms of, you know, a unique selling proposition, you know, for you, that is, that's crazy. So, you know, y y what you're talking about, Charlie, you know, you're talking about differentiating yourself. Now I want to talk about you. You were talking about per pictures earlier. You said, Hey, you know, you tell your buyer, Hey, listen, I take professional pictures. I can optimize for the number of pictures, right? A lot of people have too little. Um, <clears throat> what about, what about, you know, the, the crazy kind of, you know, you know, aerial photos or video tours, or how do you differentiate yourself? I mean, cause a lot of people say, Hey, you know, we take professional pictures, whether that's true or not, you know, maybe they have a, a DSLR and they, you know, they shoot them themselves and they say, well, it's a professional camera. So they're professional pictures, but, um, how important is it to, to actually follow through on, on being different with the picture side of it? It is. It is because, again, I mean, I know I always joke that, you know, the West Coast is so far ahead of the East Coast when it comes to technology and just marketing of, of anything in general. So on the East Coast, many times we're, you know, behind the curve with stuff. Got I know it. in my area, there are very few, maybe a handful of brokers that really do have professional photography. Not even if you're an agent that's a real good photographer, uh, you're just putting yourself on a lower level if you're actually taking the photos. It's that old adage, let the expert handle it. Yeah. Let the expert do it. So I, you know, we have forms and, and printed paper. I show them, listen, we have several companies that we have as part of our marketing profile that we have on staff that will take professional photos. Here's company A, company B. Here are the different packages. It's all provided through the company. doesn't cost you a cent. If you have, you know, a Hamptons property, a property in New York City, you know, a property that's really going to warrant an amazing virtual tour, aerial photos, creative type of photography, that's also in the package as well. And I will 
and I will talk about that. So th- there's no question it is important, but, but again, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but everything is about the Internet, you know, Toby. I wasn't doing real estate 15, 20 years ago like Steve Harney was and, and you know, uh, Mike Ferry and all these other icons that did real estate in even the 70s, the 80s, and into the 90s. They didn't have any of these technology skills. They, they, did, they just weren't around. It was all interpersonal skills in the newspaper and the printed ad and your printed MLS. That was it. Yeah. But now, because of that, and again, everything is, is about the buyer. You have to know how the buyer is perceiving everything. The buyer is on their handheld device getting emails, you know, getting hits on their phone, getting all this information. They can access anything. I'll be humble to say that most buyers know the market better than the agents do because all they do is they're searching and researching every single day. So the buyers have an expectation that the property should look amazing on the Internet. It should have this. It should have that. And I make the seller understand that this is what they're looking for. So I'm doing it for your benefit on your behalf, but I'm really doing it also because this is what the buyer commands. When they see a property that doesn't have good photos or too few photos, they, they don't even inquire. They just skip it. Right. You want your property to be skipped over or be the one that's, you know, like the Ajax commercial where there's all the, you know, also ran houses and then there's the amazing house. That's how we want your house to stand out. That's one of the ways that we, but to me, it's so simple, yet it, it just, you know, most agents don't get it. They're, they're just behind the curve on it. So let's, okay, <clears throat> so let's move on to the next, um, the third skill, which is networking. And, and you, I think you touched on this earlier because, you, you know, you, 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 uh, in, when you were telling your seller about your negotiation skills, you brought up that uh, that you have uh, that you tap into the the pool of agents and their buyers. So, <clears throat> differentiation and uh, networking. Right. So, again, having a large company such as we do, and, and we we span such a large area on Long Island in New York City, I tell the seller, listen, forget about MLS, and I'll show them a map of our offices where we're located, the, the size of our company. I'll say, listen. Once you put the property up with us, this goes out to all these offices and all these agents because we're not a franchise type of company. We are we have one owner broker and we have managers of all our offices. We're all under the same umbrella. So whether I'm calling this office or that office, your home is going to be seen by all of us. And I'll have many agents that are in the city or in Queens County or in Suffolk County on Long Island saying, Oh, Charlie's got a property in Lindbrook and I have a buyer that's looking to come closer to the city because they need to commute. So, and I tell the seller, that's all within our own company. So the network that I have access to, that I'm able to tap into, is, is just far superior than anyone else. I will discuss that find the buyer tool. And I'm literally networking with potential buyers that are out there. But I'm targeting specific ones to know that, listen, I'm not just throwing mud up against the wall. I'm finding specific buyers for you. And listen, there's also different real estate groups that I'm a part of. I'm part of a seniors real estate specialist group where there's elder care law attorneys, hospice you know, care, all different types of professionals that deal in different aspects. But guess what? They know people who might be looking to buy a house or invest in a house. So you have to do it through technology. You have to do it through the strength of your company, your personal prowess. But then you have to really utilize your own connections to the max and not just have the answer, of, well, it's going to go on MLS, it's right. going to go on Zillow, because everybody else is doing that. Yep. And I, I, look, this is, you know, this, this notion of, 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 tail, of conveying to your uh, seller that you do have a strong network and that you can, you know, <clears throat> I tell my coaching clients that all the time. You know, this is one thing you should bring up. But if you're going to say this, and this is this is me just throwing my two cents in there, Charlie. But sure. if you're going to say this, um, you better have some kind of social proof where you can back that up. And what I mean by that is, you know, on LinkedIn, you should have 500 plus connections. Um, you know, if you say, "Hey, I have the strong network," I go to LinkedIn, and you have 135 connections. I'm gonna I'm gonna think y- your credibility is gonna be shot with me. Um, you know, right. same thing with, uh, you know, a, a full Facebook, you know, you, you should be social. You should, you know, should have a, 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 as many friends as you can on Facebook. You know, if I see that as a seller, I'm going to go, yep, Charlie is a connected guy. And, uh, you know, and, you know, the whole networking piece holds up. Well, remember too, Toby, what, what do you think before a seller meets you, they might, it might be from a referral. It might be, they find you on the web, but when a seller 
even hears your name, what do you think a seller is going to do to check you out? The, 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 check, that's a, that, check me out. They're going to Google me. They, they're going to they're gonna Google, they're gonna Google your name. They're going to Google your name. So I've learned this, and I always tell new agents this. Google your name and see what comes up. And it better be good. It better be positive. It better be professional. Because if it's not, just like you said, Toby, then your credibility is out the window. Yep. So whether it's LinkedIn, face, you know, Facebook, um, you know, any of the other social settings that you're going to be a part of, whatever you know, your connection base is, make sure it's there and make sure it's, it's credible and it's believable and that it's impressive. Because, again, many, many sellers and buyers, too, forget about meeting, talking to someone on the phone. They're going to check you out virtually first. Yep. And if they don't like what they see, uh, you know, it's maybe I still might look into it, but most likely not. Right. Very, yep. very, very, very important. I totally agree. And, you know, and that ties into one other thing that, that I, you know, I, I tell my coaching clients is, you know, there's wherever you can fill out your profile, fill it out. Right. Um, we, there's lots of places for free you can put your profile up it's amazing to me charlie that you know i talk with successful guys like you every day uh and uh, it's amazing that some people are able to be successful but there's almost no information out there or you know or you know if they've gone to you know about.me for example then they put in their name but then nothing else you know i i i sometimes have a hard time contacting agents to, to have them on the show and which that is ridiculous you're a real estate agent why hide your phone number or your email address it's amazing it, to me it is it's name face and what you do you know at least have a picture yeah anything that i'm a part of i make sure that there's a professional no pun intended but a professional picture you know in, in a suit a headshot that people can see that okay this is this person's profession they're not just, you know, right. in it, and it's not a hobby to them. This is their profession. Uh, yeah, it, it, listen, the, the wrapping, the presentation, it's all in the perception of value. It all comes back to that. When you do everything at that level, your value is going to be perceived. You're not going to have your commission challenged when you demonstrate all of these different things. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just fortunate. See, I wish I learned this from the very beginning when I started. And that's why I'm so emphatic when I teach new agents, and especially, you know, when I'm with the sellers, I, I say that you figure this out now and early in your career, you're going to have an amazing career, not after five years, your first year, your second year, and on and on and on. And that's why, I, again, I go back to that initial statement of, because we don't demonstrate this to sellers, sellers have a view of us that, you know, whoever's going to put the house where I want to price it and whoever will charge that I think is reasonable, see what I think is reasonable. Look at the mentality of that. You know, I mentioned the skill of a trial lawyer before. When a trial lawyer goes into a courtroom, do you think, Toby, that in their head is, well, you know, it doesn't really matter what I do. It's up to the jury. <laughs> do you think that's how they think? No. No. Well, why not? Well, why, why don't they think that way? Because, well, you could make the argument... Listen, it's up to the jury. Just like a lot of people say, well, the buyer determines the price of the house. But why doesn't a trial lawyer think that way? A good one, obviously. Well, I mean, because you can, you and your skills can affect the outcome. I mean, you, you are the guy driving. If I'm the trial lawyer, right, I'm the guy. I'm influencing that, that judge and jury. That's exactly right. It's the same thing. It's the, I, I say that on, on my listing consultations, and it's the same approach I take. And I say, listen. Many people, and I know many agents, I, see, I was taught this when I got in the business, that the buyer determines the price. The buyer determines the price. Really? Once I got smart enough and, and I got around different people, I'd say to myself, well, what the heck, why am I here? Why, why does someone need me, an agent, if the buyer determines the price? Now, there's other answers you could think of that, okay, the appraiser, the market, the seller too, there's a lot of different answers. But when you really boil it down, Toby and Again, if you bring the 10 appraisers in and they appraise a house and there's all different numbers within fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 of each other, then I ask the question, well, who's going to influence that range the most? And I stay quiet. Most sellers don't know the answer. They don't think. Some, you know, I'm almost kind of leading them down the path, and if they get it or not, I'll say, the agent, me, because of my skills. I'm who's going to make that difference, just like the trial lawyer, my influence, my skills my techniques, my mindset, attitude, and approach. That's what's going to make the difference for you in this sale. 
And when they believe that you believe, which is another huge, huge secret nugget that I've learned, they have to believe that you believe. Because if they believe that you don't believe, it doesn't matter what you tell them. After right. That. So, you know, that, that whole, you know, that's why I say mindset, attitude, and approach is paramount to negotiating, not the tips and techniques. That stuff comes after. You know, I can talk to somebody and tell them what to say, how to say it, but you're not going to get it. If you don't know why, if you don't know the foundation of those pillars, relationship, trust, likability, and the real, you know, communication skills, none of that matters. And when you think of a great trial lawyer, 100% of their money is based on what? How well they communicate. Period. End of story. Yep. I look at the same thing as a realtor. I, I totally agree, man. I love I love that you're, I mean, you're, you're the first guy that's come on the show that's kind of talked about this stuff. So I, I love it. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. <clears throat> Let me ask you this, Charlie. Let's say that you and I were across the table and I said, look, Charlie, I love... I love that you're a great negotiator. I love all this, you're, that you're a very connected guy. <clears throat> but look, man, I'm only going to pay you 5%. You, I'm not going to give you the six that you want. How, how, I mean, like, how far will you push that before you go, hey, Toby, I'm sorry, and you, and you get up and you say, good luck? Well, I guess it depends on the frame of reference of the question. If, if we've gone through six ways from Sunday and, and the kitchen sink and everything else has been thrown in, and you're still at that place where, if, if I'm reading into your question the right way, that your perceived value of me is just not worth that 1% differential, and I've already, I guess the first thing I'll do is I'll go back again, and I'll say, you know, what is it that you feel that it's worth it to go with 5%, let's say if it was somebody else? Maybe that's what I mean. If your question is, I'm going to, someone else is doing it for 5%. Right. Or even if you just wanted to do it for 5% and not 6 I will go through the pitfalls and all the negatives and how you will net less money by going that 1% less. So if it was 500000 as opposed to, you know, 495 and that's the 1% difference, I will literally go through and go through what the, selling broker's commission will be, that it'll be less and you're going to have less agents showing your house. I even tell people, listen, great, let's price your house 1% higher. It's not going to make a difference in an appraisal or in a value by going up 1% to 505. Great, you know what? This way we have more negotiating room. You can keep your bottom line mentally where you still want to keep it, but let's go up 1% and price the house there and we can go ahead with the six and still allow me to do everything that you deserve to be done for your house. Well, how does that sound, Mr. Seller? Yeah. And look, here's what I'm getting at, Charlie, is, is um, I've had a few people come on the show, and, they're, they're, and, I, and from my memory, they're women. And, and these, women, these, and these are um, – I'm thinking of one girl in particular, and she does $10 million houses in, uh, in, uh, on, in, in California here. I think she's in Monterey. Uh, but she said that she will walk away from a ten million dollar listing if she doesn't feel like she can control her client. And I, you know, and I just I wanted to just get a sense of of how you felt on that. You know, you, you've you've done your thing, you know, and you just haven't convinced me, or I've just dug in my heels and I say, look, you know, it's my house, and and I only have you know six percent equity, so I want to maintain that one. Right. I don't know. Yeah, no, it, it will get to a point. Like I said, I'll, I'll go through the different attempts, if you will. Yeah. But if it really gets to a point that we're not seeing eye to eye, and you also have to look at it too, is are you going to work well with this other person? Right. You know, I've worked with a lot of people that I don't like, and probably vice versa too. This is business. This is not, you know, hey, let's go out and have a beer and be friends. This is business. You have to have a likability factor between the two of you. But I have definitely, um, not that often, but because most of the time I'm able to influence but there are times where it, it, they're not seeing it 
you know what, uh, I wish you all the best. Um, you know, and, and listen, it's not playing poker. It's being legitimate and being real about it. Listen, you know, I, I wish you all the best, or hey, I'm sorry, that's not the way that I work. It's another one of my favorite lines. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, Charlie, what if you did this, but if I sell it on my own, it's 2%. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, Toby, that's just not the way that I work. So I'll be very matter-of-fact, but and I'll even calm myself down even more and speak a little slower mm. when it gets to this type of point. I'll just say, listen, Mr. Smith, you know, I, uh, I, I appreciate your input. I, I can understand how you feel. And, and again, knowledge, not beat them up, not be confrontational, but, you know, it's just not the way that I work. This is how I work. This is why I work this way. I've explained it. If it's not coming across to you, you know, uh, unfortunately, and, you know, all the best, you know, with your home sale. Right. I've absolutely done that. And I, and I have no problem in doing it when, like I said, the, the woman who said the control factor or just that chemistry, because see, here's the other part of it too, and this is why I would think this agent said this to you. If that's how things are starting off, what about when you go down the road and there's other obstacles that come up? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and listen, as a good agent, you're not trying to get one listing to hatch and everything, you know, you have five, 10, 15, 20 listings, even more. So you don't really worry about one with all due respect because you're a professional and, you know, one deal does not make you. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of, of how this woman who sells $10 million houses, these are probably all the thoughts that are going through her head when she's arriving at that decision. Right. And look, and, and you touched on a, a really, really important mindset piece right there, Charlie, and that is, you know, don't be attached to the outcome. Right. You talked about slowing down. Right. And being more calm. Um, you know, don't be attached to the outcome. And if it's not going to work out, it's not going to work out. So, look, I, 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 I love it. I don't want to stay too much longer on this because I, I want to cover quickly okay. the last two pieces. Um, how do you differentiate yourself uh, and, and, and show value uh, to a seller um, by you, you, technology is the fourth the fourth skill. So right. can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean. Technology, I, I kind of overlaid, you know, some of it by talking about the find the buyer tool and just Got being it. able to have the usage of the internet that we have, meaning that you're not just putting a house out there on the internet because anybody can do that. So a lot of, you know, we use QR codes, which are a great tool, you know, to capture leads. Hmm. Um, but also as an agent, again, a lot of agents, I know they have smartphones, they have different things, but a lot of agents still use their cell phone as just an email source and making calls and texting. They're not able to set sellers up on programs, for example, where they will get feedback, automatic feedback on a daily, weekly basis, whether it's obviously feedback from buyers, but more importantly, feedback from the market, meaning that I use a program where sellers on a daily, weekly basis can get updates on the market. Obviously, I'm going to speak to them. I'm going to do drop-bys and talk to them. But they will get updates that, you know, this house for sale just came up around the corner or this house just changed price and so on and so on. So this way, I know from a technology standpoint, which is kind of tied into marketing, my seller is confident knowing that Charlie is not just going to sign the listing and put my house up there and kind of disappear. My seller is going to be kept abreast of everything that goes on on a regular basis whether they almost want to know it or not. They're going to be informed. I'd almost rather be in a place where the seller's like, Charlie, you know what? It's plenty of information. It's enough. <laughs> Thanks. I got it. Yeah. Because when it comes to getting a price reduction, which understand the mindset here, you're giving your seller so much that, and you're covering everything, the only thing they can arrive at a conclusion is, yeah, I guess I need to lower the price, Charlie. You're doing everything else right. for me. So, you know, so that's all based in there. The staging and preparation, again, it's a simple concept. You can bring HGTV into it. But, again, you see a lot of houses, Toby, that just the photos are terrible. The way the house is kept is terrible. It's just awful. Part of my job, and we work with professional stages, but part of my hmm. job is to lay that out for the seller and say, listen, you live in your house the way you live in your house. Great. God bless you. Kudos to you. It's your house. But now, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you're selling your house. You're opening up your house to the public. And there are certain proven principles and things of how a house should look that attracts buyers and subconsciously coaxes buyers 
into wanting to bid on a house, wanting to bid more on a house. And you need to have your house in a certain way. Now, there's a way that you convey that, that it's not insulting or negative, but I do it by showing examples of other houses, whether it's before and after pictures, showing them photos, showing how other houses look that I've sold and they sold in a month or in three days or in three weeks. And I don't really tell them. I kind of show them that, listen, this is the successful path of what you need to do, and here's why. You awesome. can do it this way, and you're going to sell your house for this, and it's going to take six months. So That's interesting. So you show them, and then, and then what? I mean, do you ha- – <clears throat> I found like even on this show, sometimes we'll get into very, very, you know, detailed, high level stuff, you know, that I know is super meaty. But it's amazing to me that that uh, a lot of my audience when, you know, I do interviews and sometimes I I walk away from one. And this was a great one, by the way. But sometimes I walk away and I go, "Mm -mm, that's not so good. And I'll hold on to it and I won't air it for a while. And then I finally will air it. And I'll get tons of feedback and because it's simple, right? Because I'm like, that is a little bit too simple. People love that simple hand-holding stuff. How much, you know, one thing is showing them, but how much do you hand-hold them through the process of saying, okay, this is the, 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 how I can help you, you know, present your house in a, in a better light? No, it, 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 there's no question, Toby. Hand-holding is, it, it's mental hand-holding. That's the best way to explain it. You hmm. have to because for many people, many people, this is the first time that they're are attempting to sell their house. Maybe they bought their house 30 years ago, or even if they're trading up and they bought their house recently, they, they don't know the process, Toby. We're trained professionals that do this day in, day out, just like a brain surgeon does, just like an, an attorney, an accountant, anybody else. There's a certain way that you do this. But in the very beginning, if you've set it up properly, asked the right questions, made them feel comfortable, proven your value, and then you go through the hand-holding, they're going to want to listen to you. Charlie has my best interest. He's looking out for me. Right. But, yeah, you have to hand-hold them. Uh, I was dealing with a client yesterday where there was a full-price cash offer, another above-asking uh, cash offer, and the person was frazzled. Charlie, I don't know what to do. What should I do? Again, hand-holding, being a coach, not a salesperson, very important, being a coach and taking them through the process saying, listen, there's choice A, there's choice B. What are you more comfortable with? From what I know about you and what you've told me about yourself and how you, there's this, that, you know, you have to just walk them through the process. And in the end, Toby, they arrive at a decision that is best for them. And you, and you tell them that. I'll say to people, listen, after we go through all this information, if it's about staging or anything else, how the house should look, let's say, you know, this is A, this is B. What are you most comfortable with? Here, them what's most likely to happen with these choices. Right. And what do you feel is best for you? In a nice way, you always have to put the onus back on them. You can never take the reins and say, well, this is what you should do. You have to be very careful about that because when you do that, and again, I've made the mistake of doing it in the past, and it blows up, where are all the fingers going to get pointed? Right back at you. Right back at you. So you got to have that Ben Franklin, ben Franklin method, you know, draw a line on a piece of paper, pros and cons. When people really get nitty-gritty about stuff, if they challenge you and if they're really not following you, you just got to lay it out for them and say, listen, here's choice A, here's choice B. If choice A happens, how does it affect you? Again, you have to shut up, let them talk, let them exhaust themselves and, and, and their emotions and everything. And what I found most every single time is they'll make the right decision for them, but it's also helpful to us as the agent to, well, to help them through the process. Yeah, what I like about that, Charlie, <clears throat> one thing, uh, if I go way back up to the beginning, you know, in terms of determining price, you know, you, you, you went through a process where you, you were telling the seller about how to be strategic, right? Okay, listen, if we put, you know, this is what I've seen from my experience. If we put it here, this is going to happen. And you just did that same thing with, with, you know, uh, with this last piece, right? What do I do, Charlie? And you said, well, let me tell you the most likely thing that's going to happen. I think that is so important to give, to give, to f- help people forecast it out because that's why they can't make the decision. They're like, well, I don't know what's going to happen next. So I, I love that you, that you do that. But, but it's, but it's based on, but here's the thing. It goes also back to the beginning. It's based on how well you know your client. Right. If they're at an impasse and they want to take an offer or not take an offer if they're a seller, I should already know in my head, but I do this exercise with them and I teach this. It's an amazing exercise. And again, you coach, you don't sell. 
There are times when you sell, but there are times when you coach. And this is when you have to coach. And I'll say, listen, based on what you told me, Toby, you wanted to be in Florida by September, you know, to be with, to be with your family. Or w- whatever it is that's important in your life that I wrote down and that you told me way back when, when I listed your property, I'm going to go through those things with you. And if you don't take the offer, Toby, well, this is how it'll affect you. And again, this is all what you told me. I'm not making anything up. So based on these two situations, these two choices, Toby, what do you feel is best for you? And if it's a couple or one person, I've literally witnessed them go back and forth saying, no, 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 honey, this is more important than this. We can't do this because we have to have this. And I sit back and I marvel. I do it over the phone and I do it in person. And I witness people figure it out for themselves and they make the right decision. And then they don't go back and second guess themselves. Right. So to me, it's just an amazing hand holding process, as you said. I love it. All right, let's wrap this up here. Um, <clears throat> and again, the takeaway there is coach, not sell for everybody on the audience. Okay. Uh, I always ask this question, Charlie. Uh, I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Oh, wow. That is. I should have set you up for this before the interview. I, I'm sorry, man. That's okay. But you know what? Um, one book that I would definitely recommend that I know is great, and I've read a lot of great books, but there is one book that is How to Make $100,000 Your First Year as a Real Estate Agent. I've never even heard of that book. It is an amazing, it is an amazing book. Who wrote it? Daryl Davis. I'm going to get it today. Look, for, and for everybody out in the audience, if you want a free copy of this book, uh, we cut a deal with Audible. Just go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. And uh, if this is on Audible, you can get it for free. Hey, I know that you're a tech savvy guy, um, but I'm gonna, what about an internet tool? Do you have an internet tool like an Evernote that, that you're in love with that you can share? Um, as far as for using it for real estate for, for, yeah, just in, in life or in business or whatever. I mean, I don't know if you have one tool that's kind of like, you know, in your tool bag that you, that you are constantly going back to. And if you don't, that's okay. Not, not everybody does. Yeah. I mean, nothing, nothing specific. It's really just the stuff that I've talked about. There's not, there's not like one wow factor of, of an internet tool. I mean, that, that find the buyer tool that I've talked about. Yeah. I, I, I love, you know, whenever there's a, see, because, one quick thing, and then we'll wrap up. What is what does a seller most care about? Do you have a buyer for my house, and what are you going to do to sell my house? Right. That's really all they care about. When you really dig down deep. Right. Right. And when I bring that tool out and show them that yes, there are actually real buyers that we have, and we can go contact them. So for me, that that's you know that's one thing, and it's and it's company specific with us, um, but I'd love to to fall back on that but as far as just a generic internet tool nothing really got it happens. well and look going back to that buyer thing i mean that's why it's so 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 valuable if you have a buyer that's looking in a certain area and then and it, like if especially if that's your farm if you can go and talk to your farm you know whether it's door knocking or or dropping inbound calls and saying listen i have a couple you know the mayones and uh, they're looking for a house on this street you know do you, are you interested in selling i mean you, that's you know so that's i i totally can understand how that tool is super powerful for you <clears throat> um my last question here uh, charlie is a personal habit you know you you're this great negotiator you you know you're a tech guy you know you're great at marketing but do you have a personal habit that you feel has contributed to your success a personal habit i i, I think it's being a student of the business. And what I mean by that is, is, is I make sure I take time to study those aspects of the business, meaning the, the relationship aspects, um, you know, the negotiating part of it, why people think the way they think, being present with people. It, it's just something that I, I literally will go through in my head very often and almost rehearse with myself almost like self-practice. I, I, it's just such a thing that I have fallen in love with is, is being an agent, that skill, that trait of being able to relate, listen, and communicate and influence in a way that's never manipulative. So I guess it's just always having that in the front of my mind and being conscious of it. The other habit that I have is, is studying the market. I make sure that I study the market very well based on supply, demand, absorption rates, just market knowledge. So, for example, what's, what's the number one question that you're going to get asked if you're out and about and you're wearing your name badge? 
what do you do? Well, no, what, what would I do? But like, every, like, what's the number one real estate question that an agent is going to get asked in a casual conversation or just being well, out that, about? Or what's going calling? on with the market? How's the market? What's yeah. going on at the market? Well, most agents will say good, bad, <laughs> seller's market, buyer's market, all right. kinds of answers. I'll look at you and say, well, Toby, there's 96 homes for sale in Lindbrook right now. Obviously, let's say we're in the village of Lindbrook where I live. And 22 homes came on the market last month, and 18 sold last month. I said, so right now, Toby, we're in an interesting market where, you know, the inventory is not, and I'll go on and, and talk down that path. Yeah. And what's your reaction? You, That's the answer I give you, and we discuss on the way. What's your reaction to me as an agent and, and your impression? I would tell you, if you told me that, Charlie, if you said, hey, listen, you told me all that, and you said, hey, average days on market is X, you know, uh, it looks like rates are trending up. And, uh, you know, this is what the Fed is thinking about, you know, doing with the rates. I would I would be like I'd be like, you know, I want your your email address. Right. I want to I want to know you because you would be my go to guy from there on out for I me demonstrated within a matter of seconds. Right. A perception in your head that Charlie's an expert professional. Yeah, he knows what he's talking about. If I have a question down the road, he's the guy I want to talk to. Just again, it, it's absolutely. But again, differentiation. Most agents aren't going to answer that way. Charlie, you have killed it, man. Thank you for coming on the show. I'm sure that everybody has taken probably two pages of notes. I really appreciate you taking the time out. We actually went long. I mean, we we one hour. One hour you've been teaching us. So uh, I'm sure that hour is, you know, I mean, I'm sure you could have charged us 500 bucks for that so or more. Thank you, Charlie. Let everybody know where they can find you, and uh, we'll sign off. Okay. Um, you can... Find me at uh, charlesmayone.com. So my first name and last name spelled out, Charles, M-A-I-O-N-E.com. It's my personal website. You can look up anything, uh, you know, real estate related about me. Um, and Toby, I am very, very grateful uh, that you had me on. Uh, this is a great experience speaking with you and, and tapping into your network and the people that you're around. It's it's um very grateful. Well, hey, I'm grateful. But let's so listen, everybody in the audience, if you've loved this episode with Charlie, reach out, man. You know, I've said thank you to him, but you know, it's I know everybody, you know, they 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 thank me for bringing people like Charlie on. But, you know, I would encourage you send Charlie an email and just say thanks. So, for me, Charlie, thank you again. I appreciate it and uh, let's let's keep up and talk soon. Absolutely, Toby. Be well. Thanks again. See you, bud. Bye-bye. Let's go! Yeah!